Today we're going to talk about collage and visual balance. We're going to start off talking about types of visual balance. Visual balance is the arrangement of elements in your composition. Composition is the foundation of all elements of art, whether it be sculpture, 2D design, painting, photography. The arrangement of elements is the most essential aspect um, to how the viewer will engage with the work. The first type of balance that we're going to be talking about is symmetrical balance. Uh, symmetrical balance is achieved when like shapes are repeated in the same position on either side of a vertical or a horizontal axis. So in this example you can see I've taken a green line and I've shown you where the axis is. So the first axis is the vertical one. So if you look at the vertical and you imagine it on a piece of paper and fold it in half, either side will line up. If we fold it along the horizontal line, either side will almost exactly line up. It's not quite exact, but it's a good ballpark. This makes for a more static composition, mainly because all the elements have equal visual weight. Here you'll notice an example of vertical symmetry. And in this example, you'll notice if we folded it along the green line, all of those elements would add up. Now, with Symmetrical compositions, everything is very equally weighted, um, which visually can be very pleasing, but it can also end up feeling very static. Static means that there's not a lot, not a lot of movement, energy, um, or uh, kind of dynamic use of objects within the, the piece. Asymmetrical balance, on the other hand, is achieved when dissimilar objects that are equal in value attract the eye's attention. The effect is a less formal and more uh, and less static than symmetrical balance. Um, asymmetrical balance tends to be a little bit more complicated. In this example, you can see the figure's face is clearly the focal point, um, and then it's counterbalanced with kind of the gray mass next to it. Um, here you can see that there are other things going on, but it is asymmetrical in regards to its balance. Here's another example where you have Mount Fuji is our focal point, and it's counterbalanced by the intricate elements within the sky. Um, later on in the class, we'll be talking about positive and negative space, and then also the figure ground relationship. Asymmetrical means that you've got an area of information that you're going to kind of push off to one side or emphasize in a different way. Radial balance is that all of the elements radiate from a common central point. So here you can see a focal point is established once you kind of lead your eye in where all the lines are connecting. Radial balance can be very uh, static. This would be a good example of kind of a very symmetrical radial balance. Your radial balance does not need to be right smack in the center all the time. You might find it occurring in different areas within your composition. Here's another example of symmetrical uh, radial balance. Crystallographic balance um, can also be referred to as an all-over pattern. Sometimes students have a difficult time saying crystallographic. Um, I've been saying it for so many years now, I kind of have fun saying it. And what that is is an equal emphasis is established throughout the entire format. So if we look, look at this example, we'll notice that there's no real focal point. Everything feels fairly evenly weighted. So if we look at this example, you'll notice that it's a pattern where everything's being repeated over and over and over again. There's no area that's emphasized over another area. In this example from Hannah Hawk, you'll notice the same thing. Your eye might linger a little bit on some of the text, but there's enough text where it feels like there's an all over pattern being created. Vertical balance is where all of your elements are aligned along a vertical axis. So this one, if we imagine if we folded it in half, is emphasizing the vertical aspect of the composition. And here, once again, where you have maybe two different elements on either side, the complexity of the pattern on the figure on the left balances the intensity of the red, the red dress on the woman on the right. Horizontal balance is where all elements are aligned with a central horizontal axis. Here, you notice we fold it in half. It'll emphasize the horizontal aspect of the composition. And keep in mind that horizontal or vertical line does not necessarily need to fall in the exact center of the composition. You can push it up or down or left or right, depending on how you want to play with it. There's also diagonal balance, which is going to be established on a diagonal axis. Here you'll notice once again, if we fold it in half, the two signs will align. 
And here, even though there is uh, a little bit of asymmetry, right, because we have a lot of elements pushed off to the left-hand side, we can still see that really strong diagonal balance, which is actually being defined by the negative space in the composition. Once again here, you can notice that there's a strong use of diagonal lines. And then let's talk about approaches to collage. So collage has a lot of different ways that you can approach it. Romare Bearden's work uh, very much worked with uh, illustrations or drawings that he made that he cut apart and then put back together. You'll notice that he uses a lot of solid pieces of paper in this. Uh, in this example, you can see that these are uh, uh, photographs that have been taken apart and collaged back together. Um, so this is the same artist from Mayor Bearden. He very much uh, focused on um, community and the environment of Harlem in the 60s. And this one, because of how he's utilizing his collage elements, is very chaotic. It's very vibrant. There's um, a strong energy to it. Um, and there's a lot of movement to it as well. Rauschenberg, uh, in this piece you can see we saw this piece for crystallographic um, in terms of balance. One of the things that he's doing is that he's using a lot of text and he's also using a lot of black and white elements. It might be when you're going through and collecting your collage elements that you pick a certain color palette or a certain type of image that you mainly want to utilize. Feel free to paint on top of your collage elements. Feel free to um, draw on top of your collage elements, uh, feel free to cover up parts of your collage elements. Um, the really great thing about working in collage is that there's so many different ways that you can go through and you can manipulate it. Um, you know, really find and define what that visual language will be for you. You can also um, cut shapes out and utilize those shapes. Um, in this piece, you'll notice that there is a positive side and a negative side where the shape has been cut out of a material. You absolutely can do that in collage as well. Um, you can also play with more decorative elements. Maybe you find a really great texture or pattern and you want to cut shapes out of that. You can certainly do that in this project. Um, here's Hannah Hawk again, um, and you can see that she's using newspaper clippings, um, she's using tech, she's using the figure, she's making it feel very chaotic, very energetic, little, very little use of color. Um, might be that you do want to find mainly black and white elements, or maybe you do a wash of a color on top of things to make it more monochromatic. Um, don't feel like your collage, like if we look at Hannah Hawks, it's very full, very much filling up the edge. Um, don't feel like that you have to do this. And this piece by Nigel Henderson, um, you can see that he's building up these plants and these objects with these cut um, uh, botanical illustrations. And he's simply got a color wash in the background, and it's not overly visually stimulating. So you can think about some different things like that. In Martin Rondeau's piece, you can see that he is taking very thin slivers of um, uh, magazine images and then overlaying them. And it could be something as simple as this, um, or maybe you're taking an image and you're laying things on top of it. Um, in this piece, it's a reference to uh, Dolly's work, especially the little mustache right there. And you can see, once again, it's the same thing, very fine slivers being laid on top of each other. You can take things apart and maybe put them back together, not quite as well. Um, and then uh, Carolyn Parton's work is really fascinating because she's using a lot of different materials. Um, here she's saying reconstituted paint, which is essentially just paint that she found or paint chips. Um, the work that you could do be, could be fairly abstract or non-objective. So here she's just layering materials together. You can also look at magazines in terms of form and color. So here you'll notice, uh, once again, an all over pattern or crystallographic balance. And here you'll notice that's more based on shape versus kind of cutting specific people or objects or things out of magazines. Here it's based on kind of the shapes that she's looking for. You can layer up as much as you want to. You can have flat color or flat colored pieces of paper. Um, or it can be something that's very monochromatic. Monochromatic means that it's just uh, one color is being used. In this example, all of the paper is all kind of the same yellow that's being used. You can layer things. It can be as chaotic or as organized as you want it to be. Or it can be very pristine, very sharp. Here you can see there's a sense of depth that's being created in the composition. Uh, you can also find found objects. Swoon, oftentimes uh, she uses 
um, signs or recycled materials. This one you can see is using a lot of um, uh, masking tape and then she has drawn her own uh, drawing and illustration and has cut that out and then put that on top. So if you have a strong background in uh, drawing or painting, feel free to draw your own elements, cut those out, collage with those. I have a lot of students that end up doing that. In this example, um, you can see the papers being folded in interesting ways. So if there's a three-dimensional element to your collage that you would like to pursue, feel free to do that. Uh, in this example, um, Estrada is using stickers. Um, there's lots of different materials. I'm sure that once you start looking around your house, you'll find tons of things that you can collage with. In this example, it's kind of those little puffy stickers that um, sit up off the page collage on top of a photograph that he took. Um, if you find repeats of an image, you can repeat it. Um, Unfortunately, during the school year, we have access to a photocopier, which my students uh, tend to get to play with and use for this assignment. You guys don't, but you could very well take a picture of something in a magazine, and then if you have an inkjet printer at home, you could print off copies of that if you wanted to. Um, you want to gather things that are similar in nature. In this example, you can see that the artist is gathering images of plants that have a sim visual similarity, and then he collages those together. Um, you also notice that there is a very simple background and use of shape. Um, like I said, don't feel like you need to fill the whole frame, well, in this example, um, the Sardis is, but you can have something that's fairly minimalist. Uh, the success of the collage is really, really up to you. Um, this is another, uh, another artist that's using a, a lot of masking tape. Masking tape can be a really interesting visual texture. I've included... Um, Tape on your list of materials for this project. Tape can be used in a lot of different ways. Don't necessarily feel like tape always has to be used to tape something down. Tape can be its own object. I've had several students in the past couple of years for this assignment utilize embroidery. Um, embroidering paper is a little tricky, but it's not impossible. So if you're interested in kind of embroidering or sewing or working on top of a collage, you can do that. And then you can also create patterns or graphics or find your own patterns and graphics that you maybe want to utilize. Um, this is the example that we saw from the symmetrical balance. Um, this one you can see there are lots of different types of little objects that are being created. Um, the halo that is being created around the figure's head um, would also be a good example of radial balance. You might have some compositions where you have something that's symmetrical and radial balance. Um, it just depends on how you're working. Um, in these examples, they work really, really quite nicely because uh, they're just juxtaposing two images together. It might be that you don't utilize a lot of things. It might be that you just find two images that fit really nicely together. Um, here, if you look closely, you can clearly see the figure of the woman in black and white. And then underneath of that, um, you can see that there is another figure. And you can see it's the folds of the fabric that we're seeing kind of outlined in the face right now. Um, so it might be that you play with uh, sliding things under uh, cutout shapes and seeing what happens with that. Um, but there's lots and lots of different ways to approach collage. Um, and we'll be playing with that in this assignment.